Hello, and welcome to the Macomb County League of Women Voters Candidate Forum for the New Baltimore City Council candidates for the November 2nd, 2021 general election. My name is Katherine Laboon, and I'm the current president of the League of Women Voters of Macomb County. If you're not familiar with us, we are a nonpartisan, all volunteer political organization. We were established in 1920 after winning the right to vote for women, and the League is one of the nation's most respected community based organizations. We are 100% nonpartisan. We do not support or oppose any candidates or political parties. We want everyone to vote so our elected leaders represent our entire community. We are a voice for all, working to connect people directly with government. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we are conducting this forum virtually. And I would now like to introduce our moderator for tonight, Maria Rivera. Thank you, Catherine. Hello, my name is Maria Rivera and I'll be moderator for the forum this evening. We do not have a live audience for this forum. Questions were solicited from the public prior to this forum. Only legal women voters were allowed to see those questions. The, uh, this is the purpose of this forum is for, is for a presentation of the candidates for the general election on Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Elections, oh, I'm sorry, electronics of any kind are not to be used during this forum. The format for this forum has been established by the League of Women Voters. The forum was reviewed with and agreed to by each candidate prior to the forum. There are six candidates running for three open seats. All candidates have been extended an invitation. Tonight, we are presenting three candidates, each running for a four-year term. No campaign materials are allowed throughout this forum, including buttons or coffee mugs, et cetera. Please note this forum is about the presentation of the candidates and their opinions to enable voters to make an informed decision at the polls in November. Each candidate will be allowed a one minute opening statement, a one minute response to each question, and a two minute closing statement. Of the six candidates running for city council, there are three participating this evening. I think I mentioned that. Unable to join are David Duffy, Mel Eason Jr., and Carol Weinreich. Now I'd like to introduce the participating candidates. Once again, there are three participating candidates for three open seats. Each term is for four years. In alphabetical order, they are Jeffrey Byram, Ryan Covert, and Stan Russell. Each candidate will make an opening statement for one minute. We'll have a one minute response time and a two minute closing statement. Our timekeeper this evening is league member Kathy Poor, who will hold up a card to um, when there's 30 seconds remaining and a card indicating stop when the time has expired. Please note that the audience will be unable to see these cards, but the candidates will. As moderator, I reserve the right to close discussion on any question. We will begin with the candidates' one-minute opening statements, and the closing statements will be in reverse order. So we will start with a one-minute opening statement with Mr. Ryan Covert. Mr. Covert, please. Now, Catherine, do I mute? Okay. Thank you so much. And I just want to first start by saying uh, thank you to those that are in attendance tonight, to the League of Women Voters for putting this on, um, to my fellow candidates that are participating alongside, as well as the residents, I understand, uh, that submitted questions for tonight's um, event. Um, my name is Ryan Covert. I am, as of yesterday, 31 years old, uh, first elected in 2017 to the New Baltimore City Council, 
and I'm currently finishing out uh, my first term. Um, New Baltimore has been my lifelong uh, hometown. Um, I graduated from Anchor Bay High School in 2008 and from the University of Michigan in 2012. Um, and I returned to New Baltimore after college uh, to kind of put down roots in the town that um, I knew and loved. Um, I am proud to say that uh, I'm engaged to my beautiful fiance, Samantha Plotsky. Um, by day, I work in communications for the Detroit Wayne County Port Authority. Um, and Sam and I grew up here in New Baltimore. We want to um, give uh, our future children the same way of life that we enjoyed in a safe, welcoming, and cared for community. Um, it's my home, it always has been, and I wanna make it the best place it can be. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Colbert and Mr. Byram. A one minute opening statement, please. Hello, my name is uh, Jeffrey Byram. Uh, I want to thank uh, the League of Women Voters for having me tonight. Um, also, thank my uh, fellow candidates for showing up tonight as well. Um, I've been married to my wife, Catherine, for 23 years, um, a lifelong Macomb County resident. Uh, we lived in Richmond for about 17 years, moved to New Baltimore about eight years ago. Um, really, uh, love the town, love the landscape, uh, love the people. Um, I currently serve on the New Baltimore Downtown Development Authority, uh, the New Baltimore Zoning Board of Appeals. I am a member of the Lions Club. I am the first vice president and communications chair. Uh, I'm part of the Goodfellows and the Civic Club. I think it's important to be involved uh, completely with the city, um, especially running for office. Uh, and I'm currently uh, studying at uh, St. Clair Community College for my computer information uh, systems degree. Mr. Byram, thank you very much. And Mr. Russell, you'll have one minute opening statement, please. Hi, um, and again, I would like to also th say thank you to the League of Women Voters, uh, also candidates, uh, that attend the session and also uh, our residents. Uh, I have been in New Baltimore since 90, 1999 uh, with my wife, Carrie. Uh, shortly after moving here, uh, we, had, uh, we now have four children. Uh, my oldest uh, is uh, gonna be done with college and it seems like that was just like yesterday. Uh, but it always had a, a vested interest in everything going on in New Baltimore and uh, kind of how we take things in. I've, I've been in communication with, with many parents uh, as I, I teach youth archery and I, I do some of this uh, with the Parks and Rec as part of a, a, a Huron Point Sportsman Association. I'm a board member there. So we, we do a lot with uh, residents here and I, I just see that you know we've grown and, and we can grow a lot more as long as everybody's kind of, uh, you know, giving us some ideas and, and let's move forward. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Um, next, we'll have our first question and that will go to Mr. Byram. Mr. Byram, what is the most pressing issue facing New Baltimore right now and how would you address it? I think the, uh, really the, and this is the main reason I'm running is the, the com communication and the information that uh, goes out to the residents. Um, with social media, you would think that uh, information would be readily available uh, to a lot of people. Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff where people um, make statements and, and it's really because uh, where the city could provide more uh, information and clarify things. Um, we've got several issues going on now. Um, uh, a few with our parks. Uh, we've got issues with our roads. Um, in general, it it's, gets very frustrating to a lot of people, and including myself, uh, when you don't really know what's going on. We had recently had a uh, major scare where our water system could have been poisoned. Um, and that, that's the main reason I'm running. Thank you, Mr. Byram. 
And next, Mr. Covert, uh, what is the most pressing issue facing New Baltimore right now and how would you address it? Sorry, I'm starting my timer here. Um, so I would say that the most pressing issue facing our city is one that um, really hasn't been talked about, I think, or really at the forefront of minds um, of a lot of councils for many years. Um, and to me, that's fixing our roads. Um, that was one of the primary drivers for me running four years ago um, was to try and put the city on a long-term footing um, in addressing that and not simply kind of panicking from year to year. Um, I think it's been clear to the city for many years that uh, what we get from state revenue share through the gas tax is not sufficient. Um, and then it's up to cities to present uh, local solutions to local problems. And it's why um, I felt very strongly about bringing forward a road bond proposal that's going to be on the ballot alongside all of us this year. Um, it's a $30 million plan to fix our roads over the next 12 years. Um, I know no one wants to hear it. I, I mean, I certainly don't want to pay for, for more than I have to, uh, but we have a problem and that problem is only going to grow the longer that we ignore it. Um, and so I'm committed to, to dealing with that. Um, if I'm swatted down um, in November, I'm going to keep pushing ahead and keep trying to solve that problem because it needs to be addressed. Mr. Covert, thank you very much. Uh, next question will go first to Mr. Russell. The city has a historic district, uh, I'm sorry, the city has a historic commission aimed at preserving the history of the district. Maria? Yes. Did Mr. Russell get to answer the question, the first question? Yes, he was the second respondent. Oh, Is that not right? Is. Mr. Russell, did you? You no. did not. My apologies, please. What is the most pressing issue facing New Baltimore right now and how would you address it? Uh, again, I, I would, I would uh, go on you know, with, with what Mr. Covert said. Um, one of the roads that was fixed, probably second uh, that was uh, pretty bad was was uh, the road that I live on. Uh, it was it was a big uh, mess. Uh, I do see that one of the other problems that has been brought to my attention uh, a lot from many residents is also success of Festival Park, but also some some needed attention, such as some paving of the roads, uh, some. It just speed bumps, there's, there's safety issues with the kids that are playing out there that walk away from their families. Uh, I've seen some of this firsthand by taking a trip out there uh, and, and I think people are in a rush. And I just think that, you know, we, we need to kind of keep up with safety, keep up with infrastructure improvement and, and you know, let's keep everybody happy and, and safe. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Again, my apologies for skipping you. How do I do that with three candidates? My, my apologies. Um, okay, next question then will go to, it, it'll go to Mr. Russell if you're okay with that. I, we're a little out of order. So this, I'll, I'll repeat the question. The city has a historic commission and aimed at preserving the history of the district. What can the city do to help promote their efforts? I guess, Something that I would consider is a little bit more uh, notification of, of what is planned. Uh, I try to get this word out a little bit more because I don't think that a lot of residents are aware of where the historical committee wants to go, what they have planned. And I get asked many different questions as, as we see improvements going on down there and in buildings being blocked off. But I think there's a lack of communication. So, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit more of that and maybe ask for some ideas uh, just, just so that, you know, the committee members themselves have, have their, their thoughts in mind, but maybe a little bit more with the, the residents asking, you know, how strongly they feel on one thing or another. Thank you, Mr. Russell and Mr. Covert, the Historic Commission and aimed at preserving the history of the district. What can you do to help to promote their efforts? Yeah, well, actually the, the Historic Commission, I think a lot of people uh, don't know, actually has a lot of power that supersedes even that of city council. And that's for a reason. It's to protect our downtown um, from political pressures, uh, you know, from economic pressures um, that could push them and their mission astray. So 
I think the best way that we help them is by preserving their original mission and their original intent. I think we're doing that. Um, I think putting people on that commission who, who have a mind for that, and I think we certainly do have that in our present commission, um, but they need to understand what their role is. And, and their role is to protect the charm and everything that people come to New Baltimore and love, um, but do it in a way that uh, complements what the city is trying to do, which is grow and develop and bring even more people into our town. Um, you know, they're not there to force some kind of artificial standard or historical feel on new buildings that are coming in. In fact, they don't want that. Um, what they want to see is is a vibrant, mixed town, um, a place that is unique and and doesn't forget where it came from. And I think that they're uh, they're doing that. Thank you, Mr. Colbert and Mr. Byron. Please, the Historical Commission. I think uh, the Historical Commission has a very important role. It's it's a very uh, tough job to balance. Um, what people want and preserving history. Um, the biggest thing, again, I'll, I'll keep referring back to this is communication. Um, people that would say buy a house in the historic district or business really kind of need a roadmap of what's expected um, and a lot of upfront information. I've heard um, from a lot of business owners and, and residents of, of really mishandling of uh, of information given to the residents on how to, uh, what materials to use, and, and there needs to be a fine balance. This is a historic community uh, on the lake, on the bay, and uh, we need to preserve that that history that we have. And uh, But we also need a balance there because you have to use modern materials and we have to follow modern codes. And if you look at the city, there is there is a mix of stuff there that, that doesn't follow what it's supposed to. I'm sorry. Next, we'll have Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Colbert. Sorry, I was on mute. We've had to look at uh, vacant. We've had to look at vacant buildings in the downtown area for years now all while watching cities and surrounding areas thrive, especially waterfront cities. What solutions do you candidates propose to fix this problem? What would you do to make the process more inviting to prospective business owners? Mr. Colbert, please. Sure. I kind of always think of our downtown as, as a domino. Um, just in the four years that I have been on council, uh, the city has been involved with uh, two and now three uh, public-private partnerships. The third is the most recent, it's the corner of Washington in front. It's the biggest vacant parcel that we have down there. Um, and that's the project that I wanna see over the finish line um, in the next four years. I was part of the subcommittee that negotiated that deal. Um, and it's a two-phase, uh, multi-phase uh, mixed-use development that would happen over the next two to three years um, once we move to closing. Um, and so the city, I think, I really see our role is helping to support and get that project uh, moving along. Um, we are moving towards closing, uh, but there's a whole bunch of accountability and steps that are built into there. And I think those that are running for council need to understand that uh, it's gonna be part of their role to provide oversight and support to make that happen. Um, I wish I had more time because I would talk about some of the other projects that we've been involved with downtown, uh, but I do have more on that on my website at ryancorporate.com if you guys wanna read more. Thank you, Mr. Covert. Mr. Byron, the vacant buildings, uh, what solutions to fix the problem and what would you do to make the uh, whole process more inviting to prospective owners? Well, like I said before, my, my whole mantra is gonna be communication. And I, I've had conversations with my fellow DEA members is, is to make New Baltimore the place where it's hard to get a business because everybody wants to do business there. Um, I've had several talks with uh, current business owners that they would rather uh, just do it and, and deal with the consequences because they really don't have um, a true path to follow. Um, I'm very concerned about the, uh, the big project um, at Front in Washington. Um, my background uh, right now, I've been a purchasing uh, manager director for nine years, and 
material is not only is the expense um, through the through the roof, it's just it's not obtainable. So um, we really dropped the ball on this, and this we should be looking at a at a, at a very nice building that complements the city right now, and not trying to figure out what to do. Thank you, Mr. Byram. And Mr. Russell, the vacant buildings and how about promoting businesses? Um, well, you know, there's, there's several uh, that I guess have, you know, kind of fell off uh, some communication or, or there's some issues going on uh, that at least some of the residents are, are unaware of, uh, you know, Dolls Bakery and, and uh, Kretz Garage. And just trying to find out, you know, where those are uh, there's an interest to have those businesses and those buildings be revived and, you know, let's expand business and, and make things move forward. Right now, some of those areas, not only do they, they look bad, but uh, actually I've, I've, I've seen some hazard because some of the boards were pulled off of where stalls is. Uh, there, there's weeds growing, there, there's other things going on, and it's just kind of sitting there untouched and again there may be working in the background uh, between the business owner and the city uh, but a lot of residents and I've seen it at farmers market you know what's going on with this building and why aren't they moving forward with it. Thank you Mr. Russell. Next we'll first uh, go to Mr. Byram. Do you think transparency is in New Baltimore government? Can you repeat that? I, you cut out on me. Sure. Do you think that transparency is an issue in new Baltimore government? I think uh, it's definitely an issue. Um, I said over the past several weeks, um, social media posts kind of point right to that. Um, we have uh, things going on with our parks and rec. We have a, a major donor that we're gonna do some upgrades to equipment. Um, the public was not really not given, I think, the whole story. Um, like Mr. Russell said, we have these these projects that have been ongoing for three or four years. Uh, I have talked to the business owners, um, in particular the business owners at the garage, um, but I think it's the very important for the city to, to have this communication and it's just not happening. Um, it's a small town where everybody knows each other, but nobody knows what's going on. And, and that leads to kind of where we're at. We do have a lot of open spaces and we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of great things, but we have a lot of things that are just unfinished that nobody knows about. Thank you, Mr. Byram. Next, Mr. Russell, do you think transparency is an issue in New Baltimore government? I sure do as well. Um, again, like Mr. Byram just said, you know, these things, we hear about it, you know, kind of being a candidate going forward for, for city council. I, I try to lend an ear more to individuals and as I'm talking, open up and express uh, some questions and try to get a feeling for what, what they feel and, and kind of where they would like to take things. And again, uh, I think maybe some more public forums uh, I know, you know, the, the actual uh, covert, uh, I mean, they, they kind of mess things up, but we, we could still go forward and, and try to, you know, make things happen now, get the forums going. And if, if we need to have uh, different types of meetings to inform, let's do so. Thank you, Mr. Russell and Mr. Colbert. Please, transparency, is it an issue in New Baltimore government? Sure, I would say that um, we have less of a transparency issue because these decisions and everything are all made in public forums. I think all of us that are on council are willing, I'm certainly willing to answer questions and to talk about these things at length, um, bit of a motor mouth. Um, I think we have more of a communications problem and I totally agree with that. Um, I, as a member of council for the last two years, have held um, coffee hours, constituent coffee hours. Um, I wanna keep doing that over the next four years because it really is a relaxed way that people can come and talk to me at length um, and not have to worry about speaking at a public meeting. 
Um, one proposal that I did bring forward was a city of New Baltimore smartphone app that I do want to revive. I was swatted down once, but there's so many federal dollars floating around for communications now um, that are coming in the future as well um, that we could use to implement a system like that. And basically, it would enable us to be in everyone's pockets, which is where everyone wants to be in 2021 anyway. Um, we certainly have the technology. Uh, we need to commit to using it. Um, and again, it, to, to basically put in place a mass communication in the city, uh, put in place a mass communication system for the city of New Baltimore. And I think that solves a lot of problems. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. We will go to the next question and that will first go to Mr. Russell. The 2020 census shows that the population of New Baltimore has remained stable at just over 12,000 people. Do you think the, sh the city should do more to entice people to make New Baltimore their home? I yeah, I would definitely uh, say that we should definitely keep pushing. Uh, we've had some great things in the past. I think it's great that, you know, we got the tallest flag in Michigan, things like that. People, people come and look at that, boat docks, uh, allowing, the, you know, the arts in the, the, the park and, uh, promoting those things, not only locally, but, you know, I've seen signs in the past on 94, you know, for instance, the, the tallest uh, flag. And I've seen people come here and take pictures and say, God, this is a great place to live. I would love to live here. Let's just keep advertising those things, show the positives that we have, show that we're here for, you know, uh, families that, that want to make this a home. And, and maybe want to create a business here. Uh, we got a great place and, and, and let's showcase it. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Mr. Covert, what about that census and 12, your population, stable population of 12,000 people? And what would you do to entice people to make New Baltimore their home? Sure. Well, I think the first priority for us is to, to take care of those that are that are already here. Obviously, we welcome and encourage growth. Um, you know, the city of New Baltimore is small. It's four square miles. So we certainly have a limit on how much large scale development we're going to be able to do in our city. Um, I think we learned a lot of lessons from the early 2000s where we actually were the fastest growing city in Michigan. Uh, we absolutely exploded. Um, you know, the town that I, I grew up in and moved into uh, was completely changed. Um, and we had to pay some consequences for that growth. Um, there were environmental issues with, you know, flooding. Um, there were infrastructure issues that I think we're still dealing with today when it comes to our roads and uh, perhaps our underground infrastructure. Um, so we got to do it uh, as smartly as possible. And we have to understand that as a lakefront community, um, you know, that, that proximity brings with it some responsibility to make sure that we're, that we're not, you know, building on land that is supposed to be the lake, basically. Um, so we got to do it carefully, any new growth. Um, and like I said, focus on taking care of who's already here. Thank you, Mr. Culver. And Mr. Byron, please. I, I think it's absolutely important to um, for the city to really make a new Baltimore the, the best it can be. Um, we, we have a park that's very unusual. Um, where we're laid right on the right on the bay, right on the lakefront. Um, two about two weeks ago, we had a, a car show downtown, and you just saw th all the people there. Um, it started with the farmers market, and then we had the Lions car show. Um, it was just a great event. Um, all the businesses were packed. Uh, people were having a good time. This all um, equates to better property values. Um, it's, it's hard to bring too many more people here because of uh, the state of construction in New Baltimore. There's not a whole lot of land to build new homes. So um, you're not going to see exponential growth. Uh, you'll see a little bit of growth uh, with, with, with residents. But um, right now, it's pretty stable as far as uh, what we have. And it's, it's a great place to live. Thank you, Mr. Byram. Uh, next question, we'll go first to Mr. Covert. If New Baltimore were to receive an unexpected windfall, for example, additional federal stimulus funds, how would you propose to use those funds? 
Sorry, my cat's rushing in here to, <laughs> to interrupt. I apologize. Okay, um, I'll start my, my little clock now. Um, so I would say that a huge windfall, obviously it's gonna be subject to limitation. Um, you know, my, my passion is in infrastructure. Um, it's incredibly expensive. So if we were able to obtain federal dollars, which is highly unlikely for that use, um, that is certainly a place where I'd like to see it go. Um, I would like to see uh, federal dollars potentially go into some natural shoreline uh, softening projects that have kind of been on the hook over the years, um, perhaps going into uh, building out and refitting um, our public uh, wells that are available in our park um, to kind of uh, have grown capacity down there and strengthen our connection to the water. Um, and then one huge area that I would like money for is in upgrading the system, the city's uh, communication systems. So there's obviously um, hard needs that we have, whether it's servers, um, you know, booster signals, things like that. There are needs across all of our, our buildings and facilities, uh, but I would like to put a lot of that money into online as well, particularly into creating that smartphone system that I, uh, that I had mentioned previously. So many ways we could do this. Thank you, Mr. Covert. And next, Mr. Byron. What if we had, what if you had an unexpected windfall like a, like federal stimulus funds and what would you want to do with those funds? Well, currently um, on the DDA, we are working on a, a break wall project. Um, we've got uh, some great people involved um, with a lot of help from, uh, from Chesterfield and figuring out um, what's the best way so we can make, bring the boaters in and make the bay uh, a little safer and protect the shoreline. So that, that's going to solve a lot of problems that way. Um, if we could funnel money that way, there are some DNR projects, but the city has got to have their, their plan and their goals set because we did not have that and we missed out on any kind of money that we can get for this year. So we got to get uh, our house in order and, and make sure uh, that we're going after these grants that are available. Uh, obviously, I'd like to see in infrastructure improvements, um, the drains, um, just the street, the, the streets that are really bad, um, if we could funnel it toward that, and uh, communication. Thank you, Mr. Byram. And Mr. Russell, if, you, if uh, New Baltimore received an unexpected windfall, how would you propose to use those funds? And I, I feel very strong about the infrastructure, uh, big thing. Uh, you know, we're, we're adding, uh, you know, some, some new uh, houses and subdivisions in, in different areas. I think things have started to increase again uh, after a, a kind of a slow for a couple of years. Uh, but before some of that's done, I've seen it in the past where things were put up fast and the infrastructure was kind of forgotten. Uh, we had issues uh, early on with like, even odd watering and things like that. Uh, the roads is a big problem. Uh, there's a lot of cracking on the roads. There, you know, there's, there's, uh, I guess, just areas that you know should be looking better for a city like that we are and what we want to showcase. So you know that, and I mean, there's other things that uh, you know some of the buildings, the city, city hall you know, could use some reconstruction and, and re renovation. Uh, we got the police station looking very nice. And we, you know, let's, let's just look at, at things like that. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Uh, next question, last question. And this would go first to Mr. Byram. Um, do you think that the police and fire are adequately funded? Um, this is currently a big debate, and we do have a bond issue for the uh, fire department. Um, obviously, fire de uh, fire department is is similar to insurance, and um, if you don't need it, it's hard to to say why pay for it. But when you need it, it's very important. Uh, a house behind me last year caught on fire, and I was grateful that the fire chief had uh, lived just a block away, and he came straight there. And to watch something up that that close, I think um, you really got to take a look and and see what sources of funding we can get for 
um, the fire department, number one. Number two, the, the, the police department, it has to be well-funded too. You have to attract officers of high caliber, high quality. Um, the, the Lions Club had donated a, a speed sign and I see them using that through the city and, it, and it's great. It gives them a lot of information, but uh, these type of technology things where um, they get this information cost a lot of money. So you have to fund it. Thank you, Mr. Byram. And next, Mr. Russell, are police and fire adequately funded? I, I would think that there, there still needs to be uh, some consideration about the funding, uh, including adding more of those signs. I mean, we see a couple of them now. Uh, there, there's still issues uh, that I think are safety. Uh, I think that they should look at uh, what we have for equipment for the police and fire make sure that uh, things are up to date uh, and again, make sure that the personnel that we have on staff uh, is uh, so, you know, uh, uh, trained the proper way and also available to the public. Thank you, Mr. Russell. And uh, lastly, Mr. Colbert, please, are the police and fire adequately funded? Um, yeah, so first, um, you know, notwithstanding what is on the ballot this year for a fire millage, um, they are the, the greatest uh, proportion of our general operating fund. Um, that's how we just basically fund everything out of one pool in the city is safe for our debt and infrastructure upgrades. Um, I certainly support the, the fire millage because I think that they have unique needs. Um, their equipment is insanely expensive. Um, they're also dealing with a much steeper uh, uphill fight right now. Uh, with with staffing, I know the police obviously you know have have similar issues, but um, in fire it's it's getting really close. So um, I think that operating millage is is small enough that it it won't cause a ton of pain. It's going to help modernize our fire department that has traditionally been a volunteer force, and it's going to help keep guys um, in the house uh, around the clock um, to make sure that the calls always get answered. Um, and one thing I just want to make sure that everyone is clear on is that when you're talking about fire. It's not just about putting out fires, it's about making those medical runs and being the first on the scene as our department often is. So um, I would encourage everyone to support that millage in November. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. Um, okay, so we will now go to the candidates closing statements not to exceed two minutes and we will go in reverse order of the opening statements. So we will now start with a two minute closing statement from Mr. Russell, please. Yes, I'd just like to say thanks uh, to everyone that has attended and that is viewing this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, session. Uh, there's a lot that we have to offer here in New Baltimore. Uh, you know, things are, always revolving and there, there's new ideas. I just would like those ideas to be shared. And, and you know, like Mr. Colbert said about, you know, the coffee hour, uh, you know, I think more things like that are gonna help bring residents out. And instead of just talking about ideas, you know, maybe with neighbors, if some of those are brought to the public and brought to the administration, we can help to work on, on those things going forward and see how some of that can, can go forward and uh, strengthen New Baltimore and also bring some new ideas in and, and, and again, make it a, a great place to live and, and great place to raise a family. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Next, a two minute closing statement from Mr. Byram. I just wanna thank the Macomb County League of Women Voters for uh, having us tonight. Uh, I th think this is a great little session. I want to thank my fellow uh, candidates. They are great guys. They they mean the best for the city. I've worked with both of them real closely and uh, if they get in there, it's well deserved as well. Uh, I want to um, just continue with communications and information. Um, there's some infrastructure needs too for to us to complete that. Uh, I think we should see have a, our city's capable of having us, you know, free Wi-Fi downtown. Um, we have a lot of stuff that people just don't know about. I'm in uh, off Industrial Drive where my my workplace is. Um, we manufacture 
a, a lot of stuff there that goes around the world and, and people don't know that. And that's kind of an untapped resource. Um, one of the biggest things too with uh, New Baltimore is a, is a really uh, unusual situation or a unique situation uh, compared to a lot of other communities. We have a lot of uh, women owned businesses. Uh, per, I don't know what it is per capita, but it's, it's, uh, it's on the high end and that needs to be exploited and we need to explore uh, how we can promote these uh these businesses because it's it's all been uh blood sweat and tears that they've opened the businesses and and if you go downtown you can almost every business every other business you walk into it's owned by a woman so it's um it's just such a great community we just gotta do everything we can to make it stronger um i'm i don't have any hidden agendas uh i don't have a massive budget for a campaign. I I did the waiver, so I have I've taken no no money from anybody. So every resident's voice um, is heard by me, um, and I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Byram. And last but not least, Mr. Colbert, your two minute closing statement, please. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to start by saying uh, thank you to the league for putting this event on. And uh, again, thank you to both of the candidates that showed up tonight. I do want to echo what Jeff said. Uh, one of the nice things about living in a small town is that we all do know each other. Um, there's there's no animosity or ill will between any of us. And the city is going to keep standing uh, regardless of which three of us uh, get picked. So that is good to know for all the voters out there. Um, I just want to say that four years ago, um, I was elected uh, kind of on the promise to, to help change things and to move the city in a better direction. Um, I wanted to bring kind of a more focused and um, solution-oriented approach to our decision-making, and I think that I've done that. Um, and when I'm working for our residents, um, I'm always trying to bring new ideas, energy, optimism, and to be proactive in dealing with the things that need to be dealt with. Um, as your city council member, um, I've always told you what you need to know, even if it's not what you want to hear. I think the roads is, is a big um, <laughs> a big thing that certainly hearing from a lot of residents uh, put forward a solution and um, because I thought it was the right thing to do. And I think that's my responsibility. Um, and even when I don't agree with residents, um, I'm always trying to do what I think is right on behalf of all of us. Um, I, I always focus on doing the work instead of standing in the spotlight. I think my record shows that. Um, and that's really kind of who I've always been. Um, if I'm reelected, I'm going to keep moving forward, um, as I said, on creating a long-term plan to fix our roads. Um, I, I want to keep pushing on creating a more positive climate for growth in our city by changing regulations and ordinances that kind of serve as impediments, um, and then on improving communications um, in our government. And those are just a few of the things. So um, I'll continue to do my best to make thoughtful decisions for all of us. Um, I hope you'll consider me on Tuesday, November 2nd. Um, please uh, read more and learn more about me and my campaign at www.ryancovert.com. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Covert. I wish to thank the candidates for participating in this New Baltimore City Council Forum and to the community who submitted questions. I also wish to thank Kathy Poor, our producer and timekeeper, and Catherine Laboon, director of the League of Women Voters of Macomb County for their help in putting this forum together. You can check lwvmacombcounty.com for viewing information. The League's electronic voter guide covering this race, we are covering this race, right? In vote 411, Catherine, great, thank you. Um, the League's electronic voter guide covering this and other Macomb County races is available on vote411.org and is linked to our website. The general election is Tuesday, November 2nd. All registered voters who have applied should have, should have received an application for a no excuse absentee ballot. You can verify your voting registration status and track your ballot by, using, by visiting vote411.org or michigan.gov slash vote or by calling your city clerk. Note that you can register to vote up to and including election day. To do this, you need to go to the clerk's office and be ready to vote. Your if you're mailing your ballot ba back, please do it by October 14th. Be sure to vote, sign the envelope, seal the envelope and deliver it to the clerk. 
You can also use it, uh, take it to a drop box. All ballots must be received on or before uh, Tuesday, November 2nd by 8 p.m. to be counted. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.